So even when I'm in China, I get to celebrate both Western New Year's and Chinese New Year's. I just celebrate them differently. And the best way to tell the difference is that with Western New Year's, you spend it with friends, whereas Chinese New Year's, you spend it with family. So you're talking about two different types of parties. For Lunar Chinese New Year's Eve, you don't have that one big epic party like you do in the West. What you have are sort of daytime gatherings spread across over seven days. I mean, the big dinner is Dan Yan Ye, which is the eve that's really just family. And my grandma's always asking me if I'm coming back to Hong Kong because I know my cousins, my aunts, my uncles are all gonna be around the dinner table for this most important family event of the year. And then the next day, which is sort of day one of the new year, we go around and we go visit elders. They're really kind of like multi-generational family friends. And there'll be days where, you know, my grandma will sort of be at her home and have guests come over. Date. The dates are completely different. You're probably wondering, how can the dates be different? It's the same planet. Well, we use two completely different calendars. The Gregorian calendar that was founded in the 1500s by the Romans and is based on the Earth's rotation around the sun. And it actually evolved out of the lunar calendar, which is based on the lunar cycles. So now the Chinese New Year, which is also called Spring Festival, is celebrated on the second moon of the winter solstice and can fall anywhere between late January to mid-February per the Western calendar. The last day of the year is also called Lunar New Year's Eve, which in Chinese we call Dan Yan Ye. Translated to English, that means like old, large, huge, major, very important night. As China has globalized, we've officially moved to using the Western calendar in January of 1912. But um, for old people and birthdays and festivals and feng shui, we always refer to the lunar dates. But you can't talk about dates without mentioning that Western New Year's is one night, whereas Chinese New Year's is seven days. One versus seven. This coming year, 2021, it falls on February the 12th, and it's a seven day holiday and considered like the most important holiday for Chinese people. But Chinese people don't just take those seven days off. Very often, they also take the previous seven days and also the after seven days, everybody's out of pocket for two or three weeks, work shuts down, nothing gets done, which is really inconvenient if you're a company owner like myself. But since it's the most important holiday of the year and really the only time that people really get to spend time with their family, as a boss, you can only be like, okay, basically, you know how Christmas rolls into New Year's for the West? That's Chinese New Year for us. Entertainment. So for entertainment for Western New Year's, you have New Year's Rock and Eve with Ryan Seacrest. Here in China, we have something bigger and better than that. The most traditional and important event of this family dinner on Lunar New Year's Eve is to watch the CCTV Spring Festival Gala. There's hilarious sketches, performances. It's a star-studded event. It's basically one big televised party and the must-see TV event of the year in its 38th year running. Today, it's also known as the Spring Festival Gala and has been abbreviated by us Chinese to calling it Chun Wan. Chun means spring, Wan means night. So it's broadcast annually on CCTV One, which is our main channel, and you can watch it overseas on CGTN. Fun fact, Chun Wan has won the Guinness Book of World Records as the most watched television program in the world. In 2019 alone, it had over 1.2 billion viewers. By the way, remember our population is 1.4 billion. So that's like, I mean, it's crazy. It's 10 times more than the number of people who watch the Super Bowl. 99 million people watched the Super Bowl last year. When Chun Wan first aired in 1983, and you have to remember China during the 80s was really poor, a lot of villages only had one TV for everybody to share. Chun Wan became a tradition after the opening up of China's economy, and when families come back home to their hometowns and gather their reunions, the only thing that's on TV is Chun Wan, and all the local stations are also showing Chun Wan. It has become such an important event that social media is buzzing with speculation months before about who will be on it and what will be on it. By the same token, for any actor or singer, 
being featured on the program is considered the highest accolade in their career. And many Chunwan performers have become household names in China just by appearing on that program over and over again. It begins at 8 p.m. and ends at 1 a.m. So make sure you check it out on Dress Code. The goal of the dress code of Western New Year's Eve is that if you're single, you will look good enough for someone to want to kiss you at midnight. And the goal of Chinese New Year is about removing the old and welcoming the new. So wearing red is really the norm on Chinese New Year and also we'll choose maybe a new outfit to wear on New Year's Day. It's also popular to wear traditional Chinese clothing. So men can wear a Tang suit, uh, which was a jacket that was worn by men during the Tang Dynasty not that long ago, about 100 years ago. It has an upturned collar and straight lapels. And the suit features traditional Chinese knots, which are kind of like frog buttons. The material is usually brocade, which back in those days was a luxury fabric. But sometimes for Chinese New Year, women will wear a tipao, which is what was worn by ladies during the Tang Dynasty. It's a fitted dress with a stiff straight collar and frog buttons. And actually, even in Hong Kong, up through the you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s, a lot of women, like my grandma, would wear that every day. Check out this chipao I'm wearing here. And chipaos are usually covered with exquisite embroidery of flowers, birds, or phoenix. So for Chinese New Year these days, the older generation will wear traditional Chinese clothing, whereas the younger generation will just wear something red. food and drink. For Western New Year, there isn't a specific menu. However, families tend to have their traditions and repeat them year after year. Now in China, specific dishes are prepared to give blessings for the upcoming year. Both the names and appearances of the dish are symbols of prosperity, happiness, and luck. Although dishes might be slightly different from place to place depending on local custom because China is really big, there are some dishes that everybody serves on Chinese New Year's Eve no matter what. For example, dumplings, those are usually served in the north, and fish, steamed fish, usually served on every single family table. In Chinese, fish, yu, sounds the same as surplus, which is also called yu, different character, just the same pronunciation. The typical blessing is nian nian you yu, so uh, nian nian means every year, and yu means surplus or fish, therefore wishing you a surplus of food and money every year. Another important Chinese New Year tradition is drinking wine. Not necessarily champagne, but yes, wine. Why? Because wine, which in Chinese is jiu, sounds like longevity, which is jiu. <laughs> so during Lunar New Year's Eve dinner, we will have wine and, you know, potentially bai jiu, which is a super strong 70% alcohol. By the way, check out my video with the XO Hennessy heir, Killian Hennessy, um, to see me give him a blind tasting of Chinese. Each year of Chinese New Year celebrates a different animal zodiac and there are 12 zodiac animals i'm sure you know yours and i know how to say this in chinese because it's like a rhyme that all kids sort of had to learn so that's shu is rat niu is ox shu niu hu is tiger tu is rabbit shu niu hu tu long is dragon she uh, that's followed by snake and then followed by ma horse uh, yang goat and then ho monkey ji rooster go dog and ju pig uh, you know, pig was a lazier, so it came lost in that zodiac race. Thus, pig is at the end. The rat was cheeky and jumped on the head of the ox. The ox is the most hardworking, so it was winning the race. Uh, and then just before the finish line, whoop, the rat jumped off the ox's head and beat it. So it became the first animal of the zodiac. But every 12 years, you will encounter the zodiac animal year that you were born in. And this is called your ben ming nian. So ben is kind of like same ming. It's like life nian year. Now, when you are in your ben ming nian, it is believed that you have incurred the curse of Tai Sui, who is the god of age, and he will unleash his wrath on you. So basically, this year brings nothing but bad luck. 
But red will drive away bad luck and evil spirits. So if you don't have that much red underwear, you can also wear red socks, red belt, uh, carry a red bag, all sorts of things red. If it is your Benmingyan. You can also wear jade accessories, which has the same effect as wearing red. Or you can sit in the opposite direction of Taisui, the god of age. But that gets a little bit more complicated, and I think that feng shui stuff requires a whole video in itself. Drop me a comment in the comments below if that's something you're interested in. You can also put red paper cuttings of your zodiac or other lucky symbols, words, rhyming couplets on your walls or on your windows or on your door. A popular one is fu, which means prosperity, and sometimes it's put upside down because the word, Chinese word for upside down, which is dao, dao guo lai de dao, also sounds like dao, which is arrival, dao. So if you put a fu upside down, it's like fortune is arrived, basically. Some of the rhyming couplets you'll see, usually they're in three parts, or they also have the, these four words. For example, da ji da li, which means da is big. So big luck, big money. Or it'll be chu ru ping an, usually that's written on the door. Chu ru means enter, exit. Ping an means peace. And in fact, on my little doorstep, over here in my house in Shanghai, I have the words ping an on it, uh, and it and it faces out. So apart from red underwear and red paper cuttings, the most important tradition of Chinese New Year are red packets or red envelopes, or in Chinese we'll call them hong bao. Hong means red, bao means packets. This really is a tradition that where married people or senior people or bosses will give red packets with cold hot cash cold hard cash to unmarried people, kids, or their stuff, or their juniors. And so generally speaking, on Chinese New Year's, if a young unmarried person sees an older senior person or sees their boss, they'll say they will bai nian, which means they'll send them, you know, sort of good greetings for Chinese New Year. So for example, xin nian kuai le, right? That means happy new year. In Cantonese, I'm from Hong Kong, we speak Cantonese, san lin fai lo, well, means Xin Kuai Le. Things like, oh, you know, Gong Hei Fa Chai, Lei Si Dou Lai, or, you know, Long Ma Jing Sun, which means, you know, may you be as bright and alert as a horse or a dragon. That's a phrase for elderly gentlemen. Ting Chun Seng Ju in Cantonese is what you would say for a lady who's older so that she'll always be forever beautiful and young looking. But the money in red envelopes is known as Ya Sui Qian, which literally means money that anchors the years. And I love it. When I was younger, I used to count all my money for my red packets. And you no, know, you'd get up to easily one or 2,000 US dollars worth of lucky packets when you're like six or seven years old. And now the great thing about China is because it's so digitally advanced. And obviously people are spread all over the country. It's a big, big, big country. And so WeChat has actually come up with an ingenious thing, which is electronic red packets. And so I can send you, if you have WeChat, money that's like a red packet and it, I can even type in a greeting thing and ping, it's over there and you open it up and it automatically adds to your bank account balance. All right, guys, happy Chinese New Year. Let me know how you're spending New Year's Eve. What's your favorite part of it? What's your least favorite part of it? And more importantly, tell me what would you like to make, see me make a video on next? Chinese food, Chinese feng shui, lucky red underwear, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.